Well, good morning, and welcome back to Log Cabin Firewood. So I am Jack, and today on the channel, we're going to continue knocking out some of this cherry. I got the uh, 500i, and I've got my 044 all gassed up and ready to go. Last week, we did dump the cherry over there at my house, and there's still a good bit of it to get split up. We're going to start splitting on that and get it stacked up, and we'll actually see how much wood was in this pile. So stay tuned and we'll get right into this. got a little bit more cut up. I only had about 45 minutes that I could cut today. Um, I should be able to knock the rest of this out in about an hour. Maybe a little bit more. I don't know. It's hard to estimate this stuff when it's in log form. And I still did not cut any pieces for my buddy. I might try and use this log to cut him some like uh, inch and a half cookies for his daughter's wedding. So there's a good pile here. We're going to go through and use the uh, Easton made Jaxus and bust up all this cherry a lot of the stuff i will go around and bust the bark off and that will become my personal heat wood and then anything that i can make bundle stuff with um we'll be splitting this a little bit smaller and trying to get nice perfect squares out of and then we can make some smoker bundles so let's get everything warmed up and start splitting some stuff on this fine now sunday morning for me
You ever have one of those days where you just really don't feel like doing much? <laughs> Today's one of those days. But I went through and took some of the cookies and I busted up some stuff for smoker chunks. I have a buddy of mine that has requested some of these, so I'm probably going to take that over to his house and I won't give him Miss Taryn's uh, flower pot, but I just grabbed something in the shed that was empty to put it in there. A lot of people, when they do charcoal cooks, they'll just throw a couple chunks in. That way, every now and then, they get some smoke flavor, and it's not, you know, smoke flavor the entire time. I think this would, wor this will work perfect for my buddy. Well, we are still hammering out this cherry, the first load that we brought over to the house. And here's that pile. There's still a good bit left here that we need to get through. I did go ahead and stack one trailer already, and which was about two face cords, and then we've got about one face cord of bundle wood so far. All right, so I just had a neighbor email me asking me about some wood. So we're gonna go through and unstack a little bit of this and dig into the middle of the pile and see if we have anything that is seasoned and ready to go. And these, uh, there's, six cord right here in this vicinity. I don't think you can see the other two over there. But I'm going to check this. Oh look, we got a black snake in here too. We got a snake just chilling up here. What's up, Mr. Snake? Brad does not do snakes. And I got a bunch of ants too. We got snakes. I wonder if I can pick them up without getting bit. I'm not definitely not gonna do that. Um, I do need to move you homeboy. So can you do what you got to do? Huh? Can you just move? I don't want to mess with you. Oh, I'm pretty sure some of this gum is probably seasoned. It might not be though. All right, let's see if we can get this snake out of here. I'm really surprised he hasn't moved yet. He's just chilling now. Here, bud. Come on. I don't want to hurt you. And you're a good-looking boy, too. Yeah, you're a good-looking snake. Here, come here. Come this way. I don't want you to go in there. All right, go in there. All right, so that didn't work at all. <laughs> but that's fine. He can stay over there. Because what we're going to do is open this pile up and get to the center of what's over here a little bit. And from the sounds of it, I don't know if this stuff's good or not. But me over here messing with this, he should, uh, that snake should go ahead and get out of here. And black snakes are harmless. They, uh, they take care of a bunch of rodents. This pile is, a lot of maple and there was some persimmon in here too a little bit of maple a little bunch of sweet gum too um it's not really a super good hardwood but it will do I'm trying to get into the middle of this pile i don't know if i'm gonna be able to get all the way down there without unstacking this whole thing but let's do this we'll take a piece of this and this one, try to get a little farther down. We'll try these. I don't know. I don't know if this stuff's ready. So let's stack this back up, get it covered, and then I'm gonna reach behind me and check some of this locust and cherry. Now the locust and cherry, I really wanted to keep for myself because a good friend gave it to us. And, but we're gonna see what we got. And if somebody needs some wood, I'm probably gonna end up getting rid of a quart or two of this cherry and locust. 
All right, so up first we have three pieces of the gum, which it feels damp just sitting here. I don't think this stuff's gonna be dry. It could be. But then I also grabbed a couple pieces of cherry and locust. They sound good. And then we have some pin oak. Just, I know this stuff's probably not seasoned yet, but I wanted to try it to see what it is. So let's get the axes fired up and then we'll pull the moisture meters out. All right, so we've got the gum and I split these pieces and I kept all the uh, inside pieces facing up. So this is gum here and I've got three different moisture meters. I've got the Topps Hess TS630. I've got the Eric Hill EWM03. And then I have the General MMD4E. I'm going to try this one first and let's pray that it's close to 20%. And this one is 20.4. I'm going down. It's 20%. So that's actually good. That's what we want. And this is the other piece to that one. Same thing. 19. That's good. That's what I want. And we're just going to go on down the line and test all of these. And I did go through the middle piles. Uh, this one's 22. So I think in a, a month, it's August now, I think in another month, this should be good. Hopefully. And that's 24, 23. These smaller pieces, they're actually below. So we're getting close. All right, so let's check the uh, cherry. And again, this was stuff that I pulled from the middle of the pile. <laughs> the cherry's good. We're at 15. 15.9. Even this one says 20.1. 20%. I like it. And now for the locust. The locust is a dense wood. It takes a little bit longer to dry. Yeah, this says it's 30. So, we're going to call that 30. The locust is not ready. And same thing. This was the other piece to that. So, it's, you know, 27. Let's check the other moisture meters. See what we come up with. This general is the one that I go to most often because I get better readings out of it because the pins I can actually stick in the wood better. Um, the Air Kill one does have nice prongs. Uh, they're not very huge and I love this one because it's pocket size. It fits right in your pocket. It's not big. It's not bulky. You know, you, you got to show a customer that your wood's dry. You pull it out. You press the button. It pops up right away. It tells you what the, what the current temperature is outside right now. And then you can uh, simply... Put it in there. This one says these pieces are 16.5. This says 14.3. Uh oh. What'd we say? 20.5 or something? Trying to show you guys. This one's 20.4. So the, the softer stuff's actually going to be ready. And I will let the customers know that it's softer wood that I have. This piece of cherry it says it's 10% there. Where did I test this one? Over here. So this was the center of the wood. It says 11.3 on the center. And this piece of cherry. I think this was the one that was pretty high. Uh, it just still says 16.5. Yeah, this says this locust is 27%. 31. So the locust definitely isn't ready. Let's see what the uh, top test has to say. Ah, oh, the 
cherry here says it's 14.7 and here this is the side i actually tested 23 it says it's 18 so everything's pretty close let's check this uh pin oak uh, i'm gonna guess this stuff's in the 30s 32.3 32 32.3 32 yeah the reason i like the general is because of the prongs um while the Aerokill and the Top Test Moisture Meter have beefy prongs on them, they don't bend. You, you can't really jam it in there and it, it won't like stick in there and stay like the uh, general one will. But I can uh, definitely let my client know that I have some softer woods available and I could maybe mix in some of this cherry to make up a full cord. But the locust and stuff that I have mixed up with the cherry, I stacked everything together like an idiot instead of separating my species. And uh, somebody told me that I should be doing that because locust takes longer than cherry. Um, cherry can sometimes season in six months and out there by the road where this stuff is, it gets full sun during the day. But we did end up getting all this uh, first load cleaned up here with the Jaxus. And I did bust up a bunch more cookies so that I can uh, get my chops all out and continue making smoker chunks with this stuff right here. I don't personally have much of a market around here for the uh, the mini firewood. Um, nobody around here is burning those little fire pits. Everybody around here has fire pits that are like the size of my truck. You know, we live in the country and people don't sit there and burn those little ones as much as maybe some do in the cities or something. I don't know. But let's go get a tally on the first trailer load and I'll show you how much wood was actually in there that we split up. So we did end up with exactly one face cord of nice smoker grade barkless cherry. And in all honesty, this face cord right here should pay for the entire load if I bundle this up into one cubic foot bundles and sell it all in bundles, that will pay for the entire $350 load of cherry. So we had one face cord of the uh, barkless stuff. We've got one full cord here, and then we're just gonna call this half of a face cord. It's a little bit over, but uh, so, so far we've got one, two, three, four and a half face cords split up and stacked up. It's been about a week since I have made it back over to my neighbors to finish cutting up what, has le what is left there. Um, you know, this is a couple weeks later for you. I am several weeks ahead on my videos. But yesterday we had Taryn's birthday and she had her fairy 40th and it was absolutely magical. Um, I'm so happy she had a good day with her girlfriends. Uh, you know, yeah, it was just a good day. And thank you all for the uh, well wishes and happy birthday wishes to her on the video a couple weeks ago too. I mean, it means a lot. But that's all I got for you today, guys. Um, I gotta get cleaned up, get some stuff straightened up from the party yesterday. I just wanted to get out here this morning and finish cleaning up the driveway and then next week we're going to get back over and finish that stuff at the neighbor's house so the cherry can get out of there and we will get a good tally on how much wood is actually in that pile and if it was worth the 350 bucks all right guys also in two weeks the hope event uh splitting firewood for hope is going on in stewardstown pennsylvania it is friday september 13th and uh, Ken Anderson from York Firewood, Ken and Danny over there, they are the guys actually organizing this event. And uh, I've just been talking about it, trying to promote it, trying to get some uh, more hands on deck to uh, assist us that day. There's a ton of wood there and we're trying to get it all split up. Um, Hope is a cancer network. Um, they do a lot of great things for a lot of people in need that are, uh, you know, their families are just being devastated by this horrible disease. And um, you know, HOPE stands for help with oncology problems and emotional support, and they do it all. They are just, they're good people up there, and it's a good cause. It's a good, good way to give back. They use firewood to help offset some of the costs for some of the activities and programs that they offer for, uh, you know, patients and families in need. But uh, again, that is uh, Friday, September 13th, 2024. Um, you can reach out to Ken Anderson at KenAFP at gmail.com if you've got any questions or you can also reach out to me and I can uh, help you as best as possible log cabin firewood 83 at gmail.com uh, we'd love to see you there um, 
all, all we're saying, you know, it's just going to be a firewood splitting day. You know, a bunch of machines. We've got people coming from North Carolina, New Jersey, Delaware, Maryland, Pennsylvania, obviously, because that's where it's at. Um, a couple people from Maine, Vermont. Uh, we got a good, good group of people coming so far. Um, I don't think there's anybody from the Midwest coming yet that I know of. But uh, if you'd like to come out, hang out, and uh, spend a day with us, um, again, Stewartstown, Pennsylvania, Friday the 13th, September. Uh, reach out, let us know if you could come. Um, we do need some splitters, but uh, I think right now there's 12 or 13 splitters coming, which will be awesome. But that's all I have for you guys this week. Uh, appreciate you guys hanging out, especially if you made it to right now at the end. Uh, there's going to be a couple videos here in a second. Uh, check those out. But thank you guys so much for watching. I will see you back here next Saturday, 6.30 a.m. Take care of each other. And thanks for watching.